uh, scholar of Islamic jurisprudence. Uh, he, he, when the month of Ramadan comes, these scholars, they study not only fiqh, they study fiqh, hadith, tafsir, Arabic language, right, theology. When the month of Ramadan comes, they leave everything aside. No more fiqh, no more narrations of hadith. It's just the Quran. It's all the Quran. Read English. And it has been narrated that Imam Shafi'i used to read the Quran 60 times. 60 khatm of Quran in the world. And a person like Imam Shafi'i with great energy, sharp mind, um, he, he can really do with so many things in, in, in one day. So when he put aside the narrations and hadith and, and fiqh, all these masail and things just focus on Al Quran Kari. This is how important it is for us to uh, seek guidance in the Quran, and we cannot find find guidance in the Quran if we don't understand it. Reading it is a blessing, a big reward, but seeking guidance is more important. The Prophet ﷺ also said that um, if you fast Ramadan and you know the limits of Ramadan fasting, and you stay away from the things that you are supposed to stay away from, all your previous sins will be forgiven. Now, everybody focuses on the definition and the arcan of fasting, which is very simple. And that's why the Quran talks about fasting in only four ayat. One of the five pillars of Islam is addressed in only four verses of the Quran, and there's a point here, as if Allah wants subhanahu wa ta'ala to tell us that don't focus so much about the, the masail and the details and ikhtilaf and madahib and all these things. These things are, are simple and easy. Ask Christian, get the answer, go with it. Khalas. Don't have to fight about the moon sighting and when we'll start and when we'll end and all these discussions and things that waste our energy. For ayat, enough. Kutiba alaykum usyam, kama kutiba alaykum usyam, kama End of the story. Now you need to focus on what you can get out of this, of this month. The definition of fasting is very simple. There are two arkan in this definition. So abstaining from muftira, muftira than anything that, that breaks our fasting. From fajr until maghrib with niyyah. With the niyyah. So the two arkan here, abstaining, okay, and the second is niyyah, fast, for fasting. Now, this is the legal definition of fasting. Right? Of course, there are plenty of questions and we'd we'll be more than happy to answer your questions. But Ramadan was not only to apply the legal aspect of it. There's a spiritual aspect and ethical and intellectual aspect to it. The intellectual aspect is that for us to find guidance, to think about the purpose of our life, why we are here in this life, what we want to achieve in the future. The social is to visit people, give charity, invite people for iftar, and accept invitations from others and also give zakat al filter before Eid, right? And feel about those who are misfortunate and help them, whether in our local community or somewhere else, right? The ethical is also very important. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, when someone comes and fights with you, or try to quarrel with you, don't respond. And tell yourself, I'm fasting, I'm fasting. In other words, I'm not supposed to get into this ignorance. Right? If someone comes to provoke you and say bad things to you, then don't respond in the same way. Just tell yourself, I'm fasting, it's inappropriate for me to talk about this. Right? We should stay away from all haram things, because fasting is fasting from something that's originally halal. Drinking water or eating biryani is halal, right? But in Ramadan becomes haram in this period, right? So if we, if, if we are staying away from something that is pure and clean and halal in Ramadan, to train ourselves, to discipline, to be able to practice self-discipline, then we need to understand also that we should stay from the things that are originally haram, in Ramadan or out of Ramadan, right? So, um, the legal definition, as I said, is easy and, and simple, and we should not worry so much about it. And I just want to uh, go over uh, the field of fasting very quickly. And inshallah, we'll open the floor for questions and answers. Some people cannot fast in Ramadan, but they have to make up fasting. Those who are traveling, those who are sick, or someone actually 
became extremely hungry and thirsty, he or she will die if they continue the fasting. So all these people can break their fasting and they make it up later on. The only um, thing that the course kafar, that's, that's uh, the husband and wife relationship, intimate relationship, that's the only thing that requires kafar, which is feeding 60 people or fasting 60 days or freeing a slave, which does not exist now. Um, there are some adapt very quickly um, uh, of, of the sunnah of fasting, one of which is support, of course, it is a blessing. Meal, as Rasulullah said, even if you just can drink some water, don't uh, miss fast uh, school, because the school is the pre dawn meal, uh, which is very blessed. So um, eat sahur before fat. Um, also, break your fasting once you hear the adhan of Maghrib. Don't wait for a minute or two, as some do. Right. Dua is very important. Month of Ramadan is the month of Dua. While you are fasting, and at the time of, uh, of breaking your fasting, these are the two blessed times that, uh, inshallah, your Dua will never be uh, rejected. Um, protecting our tongue, you know, from saying inappropriate things, because this is one of the things that people have difficulty control. We can fast from eating and drinking, but it's difficult to fast about by biting and talking negatively about other people or um, curse other people or lie or or give you know, false testimony. So controlling our tongue, let our tongue fast also, not only our stomach. So we need to fast from saying bad words and protect our tongue. Um, the month of Ramadan also is the month of generosity. We should give more. Not only to think about ourselves, but we need to think also of others. Giving uh, more Rasulullah who was the most generous person and he was even more generous during the month of Ramadan. Increase our ibadah, shift our focus from our body, our dunya, right, to think about an akhir. We think so much about this life and we tend to forget about the life after. She is a real, long, eternal life. We think so much about our body and our food, right? Our looking. And we tend to forget about our spirit. So Ramadan is the time when we balance the need of the body and the need of the spirit and the need of this life and the need of the life after. Increase our ibadat. Get involved into um, all these forms of ibadat, especially qiyam uh, or tahajjud or, or salat al tarawi As different names, we can talk about this in the q and session. But uh, Qiyam of Ramadan, don't miss any single night without praying Qiyam. Even two rakahs. If you cannot afford to pray the 20 or 8, if you are so tired, pray a shah, and pray even two rakahs as Qiyam. If you cannot come to the masjid, you have to sleep early, you have to go to work early morning, you cannot come, pray two, four, eight rakahs quickly, simple, fast rakah, and record before you sleep. Uh, especially the last 10 days, 10 nights. You will all know that Rasulullah used to stay for 10 days and nights in the Masjid for Atikaf. Why? Because he doesn't want to miss Laylat al Qadr. Laylat al Qadr, or the night of power, is one of these nights, better than a thousand months. And I always give this example if, if someone told you that I'll give a million dollars to you if you pray during that al Qadr. It could be the 21st, 23rd, 25th, 27th, 29th, right? Would you miss any of these nights? Of course not, because you don't want to miss the million dollars and so on. Well, this is much more valuable than a million dollars. It is 82 years, pure 82 years full of Ibadat. So we don't want to miss this, and we need to increase our Ibadat during the month of Ramadan. Month of Ramadan also the month of change. We need to really think about what we want to change in our life bad habits we have, including wasting a lot of time. Wasting a lot of time in, in watching things, talking on the phone, uh, social media. Um, yeah, some entertainment from here, you know, from time to time is okay, but wasting so much time watching the news and analysis and, and long games and uh, analysis before the game and after the game and all these things, wasting a lot of, wasting a lot of time. 
I know that cricket stays for seven, eight hours sometimes, right? I've been told that sometimes it goes for or more, right? Right? Uh, I, I watch soccer games sometimes, 90 minutes, that's it. Maybe they add five minutes for injury time. Um, uh, yeah, seriously, I mean, entertainment is important. We need to entertain ourselves. We cannot be serious all the time, but we should um, be balanced. Can we take a shower? Can we swim in Ramadan? Yes, you can swim in Ramadan. Okay, and can you can take a shower? Of course you can take a shower. So lots of used to used uh, to take a cold shower because when it gets very hot. What if some water came into my nose, my ears? Don't worry about this. You're not jumping in the pool to get water into your ears, right? But if it happens, it happens. Um, you have to uh, take this ear drop or eye drop can take it, no problem, even if you taste it in your throat. That's fine, not a problem. Um, washing our mouth and rinsing our nose, especially in the allergy time now, it's recommended, but the Prophet said, don't exaggerate in this while fasting. We make this in our wudu before we pray, but we have to be more careful when you do, when you rinse your nose and wash your mouth with water while you are fasting. Just be careful. And I don't want to get into what the said about what if some water came inside, okay? And some ulama said, like Abu Hanifa and Malik said, the day is gone, then you have to make up this day, right? But others said, no, if you have by mistake, let's say you are making wudu and water came inside, and you know, it went inside uh, by mistake, okay? Now, I personally believe that it is nothing, uh, but just be careful. You don't have to do anything, but according to one of our needs and manic, your fasting is, is over, then you have to make up this day, because I lost you, you lost it, the day. Um, how about smelling <coughs> perfume or um, and all these things? Also, there's nothing, because some scholars say, no, if you, if you smell perfume and you can find it in your throat, you can um, taste it, then your fasting is over, and that's not true. Drawing blood, this question comes up all the time. Um, uh, Rasulullah sallallahu used to make hijama. Hijama means that it's cupping, drawing blood. But if you know that it will weaken you, makes you so weak, then don't do it while you're fasting. And uh, for blood tests and similar things, that's not a big deal. Unless you know that you're too weak to do that, then then don't do it, just because of the weakness, but what does not affect your fasting. Um, Imam Taymiyyah has a very good analogy when it comes to all these questions about this uh, and mascara or uh, eye drop. Um, and uh, uh, other injections and, and shower and, and, and so on. He said, if these things make oh, uh, breaks our fasting, then Rasulullah would have said that. Because these things happen all the time. And since the Prophet did not say anything about it, the original ruling is that it is permissible and does not affect your fasting. <clears throat> what if someone passed away and he or she did not fast some days? It happens, sometimes people get sick, all right? Uh, and they could not fast for a week, and then, you know, they became healthy again. So, so after Ramadan, they have to make up for the seven days they missed, right? But what if they died before they make it up? Two opinions. One, uh, Imam Shafi's opinion is that someone from his family should fast these days on his or her behalf. Imam Hanifa and others know the family of the deceased should feed one person for every day he or she could not fast. So let's say someone missed 10 days, they should feed 10 poor people. Imam Shafi relied on a hadith in Bukhari and Muslim, in which Rasulullah said, Man mata whoever passed away before he makes up the days of fasting, then sama anhu waliyu. Waliyu means the inheritors, his brother or son or daughter or cousin and so on. So there are two opinions, and, and if you do one of the two, inshallah, this, this will, will be valid. 
So for the days we miss because of uh, valid excuse, traveling or being sick, do we have to fast them consecutively? So if you, if you missed seven days, do you have to make these seven days up later on consecutively or you can separate them? You can separate them. You don't have to do them immediately after eight. You don't have to do them consecutively. You can fast any seven days of the year. However, however, it's better always to get it done as early as possible. Because it's a date to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we should pay the debt of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <clears throat> All right, so uh, can, can uh, brother, uh, uh, can someone help me with these questions? Allah uh, based in Ramadan, uh, yes, you can do both. Unless you feel that, you know, what this will make you very weak. And sometimes, you know, when you, when you donate blood, they give you some sugar and, and juice and stuff. Um, but if you feel you are strong enough and the drawing blood is not going to affect your health, then there's nothing wrong with that. Okay? Okay, so this one is actually is a mandatory form of way of eight. Twenty or eight. <laughs> okay. Twenty or eight. If you pray nine GD, you pray twenty. Alright? If you go to the event center, pray eight. I'm serious. My point is follow your imam. Imam has been appointed, as Rasulullah said, the Imam has been appointed to be followed. Okay, both of them are correct. Both of them are correct. Let me just very quickly introduce to you, because we are not familiar with eight rakas, Hadith in Bukhari. Aisha, radiallahu anha, the wife of the Prophet, our mother, said that the Prophet never prayed more than 11 rakas in Ramadan or after Ramadan. And 11 means 8 plus 3. He never prayed more than eight. But his eight is much better than our 20 or even 50 or 100. It's a, it's a quality of his prayer. And she said, don't ask how large and how beautiful they are. Right? So, this is Hadith in Bukhari. And Aisha, who saw the Prophet on a daily basis, or maybe weekly basis. Right? And she noticed that, and she was young and sharp and smart, she said, he did not pray more than 11. In Ramadan, before, after, it's the same. Now, where does 20 came from then? Hazrat Umar, radiallahu anhu. Why, why Umar made 20? Huh? Okay, so let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. If I were to read the Tarmid prayer, and I would read, let's say, 30 pages. Would you rather prefer me reciting 30 pages in 8 rakas or in 20 rakas? Which one is easier? Oh, it's about easiest. Okay? Because in 8 rakas you stand longer, right? But in 20 rakas you make Rukhu and Sudhu, that would be easier, right? You don't have to stand long, okay? That's exactly what, that, what the flow is. That's it. So Umar radiallahu anhu, very briefly, Taraweeh is, you know, Rasulullah s.a.w. made Taraweeh two nights only. And after this he not made Taraweeh. Everybody used to pray Qiyam on his own. And the Prophet s.a.w. fasted how many Ramadan did he fast? Anybody know? He became the Imam, 
And he told them to create two interrupters to make it easier for people. Fine? Okay. After this, in the time of Imam Malik, Malik ibn Anas, the Imam of Medina, he actually built Medina to create 32 rakas. 32. Have you heard about this before? Okay. Anybody from Morocco, Algeria, Mauritania? This is an Amalek opinion. Maybe, maybe some forward, some not, but this is his opinion. So people have managed to pray 32 rakas. So the number it did not come from the heaven. The number did not come from Allah, the number did not come from the Prophet. The Prophet himself prayed 11. So, just a simple answer for the question. If you pray 8, you are good, you are following the Sunnah. If you pray 20, you are also good, you are following the Sunnah. Don't worry about this. Now, the question is... So a lot of these kids have like, exams coming up in the middle of Ramadan, but they want to also take, take advantage of the early. So Well, uh, those who have exams, um, uh, and they want to take advantage of Ramadan. Um, so what is the question? So some students, they take exams in the middle of Ramadan, they want to take advantage of Ramadan, and they want also to focus and, and study for their exams. So can they miss the Rawi in order to do well in the exams? This depends on, you know, it, of, of, it, on everyone's preference. Again, Qiyam is not wajib. You are not committing a sin if you don't pray Qiyam. This is an important point. Number two, as I said, if you cannot pick in the masjid, you want to go and sleep early, you can pray Isha in the masjid, go pray at home, and then sleep. If you, are, if you can manage to pray eight rakas here with the, with, uh, with the Jama'ah, and then you pray with at home and sleep, that's also possible. Right? If you can manage or change your schedule to pray the 20 and go and sleep, and then you can sleep after you come back from school, it, it, everybody is different. Everyone is different. So my point here is that don't feel bad if you don't pray the 20 rakas and the witch with the imam. If you can do that, fine. If you cannot pray only eight. If you can even not pray eight, pray four. If you cannot even pray for, pray a shah in the masjid, pray two or four rakas or eight rakas at home quickly and sleep. Okay? The next question is if, there's, if you ever having a nosebleed, does that break your fast? No, nosebleeding does not break your fast. So the, 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 the fasting is broken when we get something in and if, when we get something out. Keep this in mind. What breaks our fasting is what we bring into our body, like eating and drinking, and, and, and what we get, what, the, the discharge that comes from, from that happens to women, menstruation, that of course invalidate the fasting, and then you have to make this up later on, and uh, ejaculation for men for any reason. This also breaks the fasting, and the intentional vomiting. If someone took a medicine or put his mouth in his throat to vomit intentionally, this also breaks fasting, all right? So, so um, when something happened unintentionally, now if someone vomited unintentionally, you know, not intentionally, then this does not break his fasting or fasting. Similarly, bleeding. Sahaba used to fast and they have wounds, deep wounds um, from, from wars and so on, and, and they continue their fasting. So, this is not an issue, inshallah. Brushing the teeth. It is sunnah to use the miswak while you're fasting, while or, or at all times. The so why used to use his miswak. Okay? In the beginning of the day, in the middle of the day, at the end of the day. It's it's a big mistake when some people say that you know the Prophet said in the hadith that the, the, the bad smell that comes from the mouth of fasting is dearer to Allah than the smell of mercy. That's that that is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay, but we as Muslims, especially in the workplace, we should not smell bad. Our uh, Muslims smell horrible in Ramadan. No, we need to brush our teeth and keep our mouth clean at all times. Rasulullah used to use this uh, toothbrush, a little miswak, natural um, uh, uh, plant, uh, part of a tree. Uh, but now we can brush our teeth, even you would use uh, toothpaste. Of course, we don't eat, we don't swallow it. If someone swallows it, then it's insane and he should not fast it. But if it happens by mistake, then it's a different story. Okay? Uh, use it and rinse it, and that's it. What about uh, the use of an IV? This is a 
The IV also, if not, I may have talked about it, IV um, does not break fast. And I know, I know some scholars say that it does because you're bringing in something to your body. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to fast, not to eat or drink. And, and IV is not food, it's not water, or not eating or drinking. Alright? So, for those who are in need for this, they can use it, and inshallah does not break their fasting. Allah Yes. And for the sisters, who just want to write a question or ask a question, or that book. Yes. Do you look like Excuse me? Okay, can we read Taraweeh while reading from the Mus'haf? Um, uh, some uh, Hanafi not have been very strict with this. No, you cannot read anything. And in fact, how Zalbani told me something I did not read in the book of that. If you are leading the prayer and it's a man and someone holding the Mus'haf and he corrected you and you listen to him, <laughs> then you're praising that because he is reading the Mus'haf. And so on. That was very interesting. But other madahib uh, are okay with that, especially if you are not hafiz. If someone is not hafiz, does not memorize any Quran or read it, but he or she can read. In this case, the ulama said yes, they can read uh, Quran because this happened to Tawfa Aisha radiallahu anha, and and some of the Sahaba used to do that. They read from the Quran um, during salah. And some in some mosques uh, they have this is called Mus'haf al-Tahajjud. The Quran is written. Right? And every record in one page, so you don't have to flip the page. And they put it and the Imam leads the Salah and it's a big post of like this size, put him and he leads and it will be from it. So it's easy, it's not a big deal. If you are alone, if you are at home and you're not half as you don't memorize so many verses of the Quran, then you can read from it, inshallah. Any um, question? The Sunnah of the Prophet is to break our fasting with eating date, three or five, or even one. Which number? Uh, odd number. Um, and that's, uh, uh, some say this because this brings this fructose to your body and your body needs some sugar and, and, and so on. Uh, and so the Prophet used to eat uh, water, uh, and if he does not find this, he eats the dry date, and if he could not find it, then he <coughs> drinks some water. Right? So um, it is a sunnah to do that. And then pray about it, and then eat the biryanis and the other heavy meals. Alright? It's a good idea not to eat very spicy food in Ramadan because this will make you thirsty. And eating biryani and sahur. <laughs> okay, I'm not going to get that to you. This is not from a filter perspective, but seriously, if you have a lot of, of, of sodium in your body, a lot of sodium, whether salt, sea salt, or any uh, salty stuff, it will make you thirsty with it. Potassium, in, in, in the other hand, is, is very healthy. So eating banana, um, in, in, and or dates, or milk, uh, in the sahur. Is good. This, this will retain the water and keep the water in your body for, for, for longer period of time. So seriously, uh, you know, eating spicy or salty food in Sahur is not a good idea. Um, uh, maybe it's a good idea to eat it in a start time. Wow. Well, uh, yes. Do we have to make Niya? That's a very good question. Niya is in the heart. You don't have to say any specific words. Your niya is in your heart, so you know that you are you intend to fast the whole month of Ramadan, Iman and Mahdi Seven. So, so you don't have to say it. Some of them said you have one niya for the whole month. Others said no, you have to have every uh, a niya for each, for each day, because each day is a like separate ibadah. But and the Lama said that suhoor is niya. Niya is in your heart. You have the intention to fast, right? So don't, don't, don't make big fuss about this. So be safe with this. There's like like nothing reported about this. It's not so nice, it's a tradition. As again, you don't have to say anything. It's in your heart. Right? For new Muslims, um, please make it easy and simple for, for them. 
Because uh, once someone converts to Islam and he or she does not know really anything, don't give them a long list of do's and don'ts. Uh, keep it simple for people. Yes. Dua for iftar. The dua for iftar, Allah Malak Asumt, wa ala rizbika aftar. Rasulullah used to say that. Allah Malak Asumt, for you I fasted and um, I break my fasting eating your provisional risk. My question was, do you have It's optional. It's no obligation. And however, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that this time in the fiqh, he da'wah to Allah. At the time of iftar, you have a du'a mustajab. So don't waste this opportunity. Make a du'a. Yes, uh, Aisha, the law, the question about how to make up uh, the day we, we missed. Do we have to do it right after eight? Aisha, the law, used to fast or to make up for the days she missed in Ramadan in Shaban next year. So the month of Shaban is the month where she fast. Why? They said because the Sulaiman used to fast most of the month of Shaban. So he's fasting, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and she fasts with him. But again, um, some people prefer to wait until the winter time comes. The day is very short. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. Because Allah said, Ayyaman ma'adu that. Allah is not specifically saying you have to fast a week after Allah or two weeks after Allah and so on. So any, any day will do. And what if someone, and sisters always ask this question, what if someone missed, let's say, 10 days of Ramadan and he or she did not make them up until the next Ramadan? Have you heard this question before? Right? Only Imam Ahmad who said that she, he or she should pay uh, a dirham, yani a dollar or half a dollar for every day if the next one came. But again, that's, that opinion is, is not that strong because it's, no, it's not supported by textual evidence. So um, you carry them for the next year. So you miss five days here and ten days there and then you have to make fifteen days anyways. It's a debt. You have to pay it off. You don't want to die before you make up for these days. So this question is kind of related. So if a woman, can a woman feed others for this fast if they're not able to make up the fast during the year or a few years and if it keeps accumulating? So they keep keep accumulating. For women. For women. So, so uh, it, it accumulates for some reasons. One is that those who are either pregnant and then breastfeeding and then pregnant and breastfeeding, so they have months upon months. So some ladies that have four, five, six, seven children, they're always either pregnant or nursing. Pregnant or nursing. So this is a good example of taking the rufsa that Allah has given to us. Abdullah Abbas and Abdullah Omar, they both the pregnant woman or nursing. Um, they don't have to make up for this. They just need to feed. All right? You need to feed one poor person for every day. Because she will be like 45 or 50 years and then she has to make up for, for 15 Ramadans. That will be even difficult. So I know in Hanafi Madhab, you know, no, she has to make these days up. But in other Madhab, that uh, she um, only pays a fifth of it. I personally prefer, after studying these two opinions, for those young ladies who can make these days up later on, then they should. But for those who are growing older, right, and they have plenty of days to make up, then it would be very difficult for, for them to fast these days. So they feed instead of fasting. Allah Alam. Right? So, uh, yes. Yes. Okay, let me take some questions from this. No question coming from here yet? Okay. Yes. Uh, what about men? If they have missed a you know, certain part of their life, what is the most authentic opinion in terms of compensating, you know, because I know some, some scholars say you can feed the poor, and the other ones say you have to. Again, for those who missed so many Ramadans, and then Allah guided them, and then start fasting, and someone never fasted, and he is 55 years old. So, 
it will be very difficult for him to make up for all these number of years. All right. So in this case, he committed a great sin, and he actually should repent to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala and make as many nothing siyam and give in, in feeding people and ask Allah to forgive his sins. Like prayer, that's all. Not someone must say no. He has to pray all the prayers. It's, it's, it's in some case. If he's like 20 years old, that, that's easy, right? Um, but uh, I, I believe Allah Allah should repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and make as many extra fasting as possible and ask Allah to accept his, his tawbah. Allah. Seems to be fasting throughout the year anyway. Yes. Let me just take this question from this young man. Yes. This is my mom's question. Okay. Can women do itikaf in their house? No, itikaf is to be only done in the masjid. Can we do ibadah at home? Of course we can. Can you designate one room at the mosque and no electronics, no phones or nothing? Just you stay there and pray and sleep there and yeah, of course you can do that. But that, that's not etiquette. Because the Quran clearly said, وَلَا تُبَاشِرُهُنَّ وَأَنْتُمْ عَاكِفُونَ فِي الْمَسَاجِدِ Etiquette is to be done only in the world. So if you want to, if you are in Masjid al-Haram in, in the last 10 days of Ramadan, right? And you may want to have the need to make atikaf, stay in the Masjid al-Haram, make atikaf, go outside, use the bathroom, and make wudu, and come back. So how about when you used to do that? You don't have bathrooms and showers in the Masjid. So what did you do? You go home, take a shower, and come back. If they need to go home to change their clothes, to, they just go and do it and come back. So it's not as we think sometimes it's like a prison. Atikaf is not a prison. It's different between atikaf and prison, right? Uh, they used to go outside to, you know, there's no bathroom in the masjid like we have now. They used to go far away from the masjid to relieve themselves and come back. But when they go, they don't spend some time in the shopping mall and, you know, stay in the cafe and, you know, watch a game. And, no, just go and do it and come back quickly. So the answer is etikaf should be only done in the masjid. And some masjid actually provide a place for uh, ladies to make etikaf. And by the way, the word etikaf is not only, it's not limited to less than days of Ramadan. If you come to the masjid with the name of etikaf, now you pray Maghrib and make etikaf until Isha, and you're staying in the masjid. You're not going to respond to any text message, right? You are going to stay, read Quran, make dhikr and dua. That's etikaf, that's all etikaf, right? Etikaf only to be done in the masjid. And a person comes in, is it better for them to create their separate? Good question. Good question. Should they pray to? Okay, now you come late for Isha, and the uh, Jamar is done, and the Imam is leaving Taraweeh. What should we do if we are like three, four, five people come? Should we make a separate Jamar to pray Isha while the Taraweeh is going on, or can we pray? or join the Taraweeh with the niyyah of praying Isha. I want you to pay attention to this, because this caused some fitness in IGD. <coughs> the question is about, can the one who prays follow, like Isha, follow an Imam who is praying nothing? You understand the question? You pray the Sunnah of Maghrib, and someone came and joined you to pray Maghrib. For, for him it's Maghrib, for me it's Sunnah. I mean, join me in the Jamaat. And can the opposite be true? Can someone need follow and someone pray with the name of Nafi? The answer is yes. And here's that. Here are some evidence. Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi one day, was, uh, he finished the Salah the Masjid and someone came late and was praying alone. And the Prophet said, would someone pray with his brother to make a Jamaat? And one of the Sahabah volunteered to pray with him. So the Sahabi prayed already with the Prophet. Now he's, he's joining this man. For him, it's nothing. For this man, it's fun. But he wants this man to get the reward of Jamal. Right? So this consensus among the scholars that if you if you are praying nothing behind someone pray, pray, praying for it, that's not a problem. Now, can the opposite be true? Can you pray for it behind someone who's praying nothing? The answer is absolutely yes. And what is the evidence of this? Hadith in Bukhari and Muslim cannot be more authentic. 
عن جابر بن عبد الله رضي الله عنه جابر بن عبد الله was of young sahaba Ansar right he said معاذ بن جبل this is the narration he used to pray Isha in the Prophet's masjid and then his people far away from the Prophet's masjid they wait for Muad because he's half it so he comes after he's done with the Isha with the Prophet and he goes to his people and he leads them in Isha so Jal ibn Abdullah said for Muad it is nothing because he already prayed Isha with the Prophet and for his people it is what? Hadith al-Bukhari and Muslim and some said, no, 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 those who pray nothing cannot lead those who are praying for them. So let's throw this hadith then out of the Khair of Muslim. What would you do with this hadith? Yeah, Islam is easy and simple. Islam is easy and simple. So why, why Mu'ad is doing this? Why, why not someone else? Because it's half us. He's the, the Imam of his community. He already prayed for the Prophet. And he is praying leaving his community in Isha, and for him it's not obvious because really, and some close-minded people say, no, 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 no. He maybe he was praying with the name of Nathan, with the Prophet, and followed the Prophet. That's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about. He's praying Nathan with the Prophet, and then followed with his people? That's not nonsense. And Jair made clear, he said, for Mu'ad is Nathan, for his community is followed. End of the story. So when you come in Ramadan and you see the Imam leading Taraweeh, you join them with the name of Ray Isha, you missed. And when the Imam makes the sleep after two rakas, then you stand up and pray two more rakas. It is clear. You want me to talk more about this? <laughs> so if someone comes and says, no, if you are praying with nothing, you cannot lead those who pray for stupid. Sorry. Ignorance. Next. Yes. Can somebody lead twice? What do you mean lead twice? Like that. Like that. Like that. Like Yes. In case if he, if he had led Salah. It's, it's nothing already, whether he's an Imam or Mahmoud. So he's following, he already prayed for Whether he's leading or following, he prayed for already. And then he's praying nothing. Not a big deal. Yes. Yes. Can we use the cologne or perfume during the Absolutely. You should use that. One of the sunnah of the Prophet He said, among the things that have been made dear to me is applying perfume. He used to smell very good. So, yes, we apply perfume in, 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 in. The only time we don't apply perfume in the time of Ihram. You are making Hajj or Umrah and you stir La Bayt, Allah, La Bayt, then you cannot apply. But in, in Ramadan, there's no, res no restriction. Yes? So, uh, feeding, feeding food should make up for the list So, is it really you have to make sure you feed, or nowadays you go through the organization and pay? So That's a good question. Uh, when we cannot fast, like let's say it's some people with chronic illness, right? Very old people. Then they feed. So, do they have to feed or they can give the value of the food and give it as donation somewhere? No. Quran said, if'am. So, if Quran says if'am, it has to be if'am. Now, in some organizations, they collect this money specifically for, for, for fidya and they spend it in feeding people. So, they say we have different programs. This for the cattle man, this for the cattle food, and this for fidya. So when you donate for Fidya, then you are not responsible. They are responsible to use this money to feed the needy people. And why is that? Why is that? Sometimes we think about the food, and sometimes we think about the value of the food. Like, for example, Abu Hanifa was very genius when he said, you can give zakat al fitr value. Because the hadith says that zakat al fitr should be a sar, which is like almost 2.5 kilograms of rice or, or dairy or, or date, the people, what the people eat. Now, three madhahib said you have to give food. You have to get the food and go and give poor people rice or date or something. Only in Abu Hanifa who said, no, you can give the value of this food to the poor people. And look at our time now. 
would it be easier for the car company to collect price and give it to people, poor people or collect money and give it to the poor? They can pay, they can buy food or medicine or clothes or whatever they need. So Abu Hanifa actually, um, his, his, his opinion is almost everywhere in the Muslim world, even in non-Hanafi uh, countries, North Africa, for example, they all follow Abu Hanifa. Why? Because it's easier for the giver, it's easier for the collector, and it's easier for the poor. Right? Give them money and let them buy what they need. Obama. This is kind of related. Okay. Uh, what's more rewarding, feeding friends or feeding people, poor people in India or other Muslim countries? Which is more rewarding, feeding friends or feeding poor, poor people? We are here or somewhere else. Yeah, it depends on the need. So you would want to also have good relationship with your friends. You want to invite your friends. But if you know that people are dying out of hunger, losing their children out of hunger, are being kicked out of their homes because of the civil wars or natural disasters, they are they, they should actually take priority. In the hadith, the Prophet said the worst walima, the worst walima is the walima to which are the wealthy people are invited and the poor people are deprived. That's the worst walima. I'm inviting already very wealthy people, I have tons of food in their homes, I'm inviting them, and you're forgetting about the poor people. So if you know that some people are, are don't eat meat except once or twice a year, and believe me, there are plenty of people like this, um, or people suffering, then, then, then they, they should have more priority. But if you can't do both, then that could be great, inshallah. So this one has to do with Nia. So one is, can you make Nia for the entire month at one time? Yes, no, Shafi said that. You can make that one Nia for the, fasting the entire month. And then, that would be sufficient. What happens if anyone forgets Nia? Again, the Nia is in the heart. Forget Nia, like, forget saying, Nawaitu Siyama, Ghabin, Minjah, Ramadan, that's fine, you don't have to say that. I've never said this, but Allah knows, in my heart, I want to fast. That's it. Right? The only problem is when someone fasts, you know that many people fast, non-Muslims, for health reasons, to lose weight. People do fast. So in this case, no, that's not acceptable. You have to have the niyyah of doing this out of ibadah. You are made out of obedience to Allah subhanahu not to lose weight or not to look good and so on. Can I make me in my own language? You can make me you can make me in your own language or you can make me without speaking. No language is necessary. Me is in the heart. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows that in your heart you want to fast and you are going to abstain from eating and drinking with the niyyah of pleasing Allah, that's enough. And niyyah for nothing, for nothing, the fasting is not necessary. The Prophet would go to his wife at lunchtime and say, do you have any food? Say, no, I have no food. Say, khalas, okay, I'm fasting. I will fast then. Understand? But for far, you have to have the niyyah before it. But you don't have to spend that some time. Now I have to make the niyyah for fasting tomorrow. How do you say the Urdu? You know, you don't have to say that. You don't have to say any word. Okay? No. What was that? Traveling. Traveling. Okay. Traveling is so easy. It's not always so easy. Okay? It's not always. Don't don't generalize. Some yeah, comparing to the traveling or suffer in the old days, it's easier. But even if you can fast, even if you can fast, you still can break your fasting and make it up later on without losing any reward. It's a ruqsa. Ruqsa means it's allowance. Allah give it to you. You want to take it? Take it. You don't want to take it? Fine. So, would it be better to fast while traveling or better not to fast while fasting? It's a lot of opinions. But I like what Umar ibn Abdul Aziz said. He said, the best of the two is the easier of the two. 
So if, this, if fasting while traveling will make you sick and tired and unable to function, then it's better not to fast. Okay? But if fasting while traveling will not affect you badly, then it's better to fast. Imam Malik and Abu Hanifa said that it's better to fast while traveling if you can. It's not going to badly affect you. But if you reach the point where fasting becomes really problematic, then it's better not to fast. One instance, the Prophet was traveling and he told his companions, tomorrow you are going to meet your enemies. So if you want, you can fast. If you want, you can break your fasting and make up. So some Sahaba fast, continue fasting, and others do not. The next day, he said, now it's, we are very close to the enemy. So you should break your fasting. Okay? In his trip from uh, one, one of his trips to Mecca, when he opened Mecca in the eighth year, it was Ramadan. And he saw Allah after fasting. Someone kept saying, Ya Rasulullah, you are very tired. So can you please say something about, it's okay not to fast and make. And the Prophet came out with his candle and he, after Asr, and he was drinking in front of everybody to tell them that you are traveling, it's okay not to fast. What's not okay when people kill themselves? Allah doesn't want you to kill yourself. You know, if you really cannot fast, it's very difficult. You don't want two people to kill you. Right? No, you don't have to go that far. Allah is merciful and Allah gave you this shuksa. In the hadith, Allah loves to see people using this allowance as He likes to see them following His commands. If you are not traveling, you are not sick, Allah likes to see you fasting, right? If you are traveling, if you are sick, Allah likes to see you not fasting. Okay? So it's up to the individual. What kind of traveling then? If I go to Lansing or Dearborn, what do, would we call this? Traveling? Would you call this suffering? Yes. Or people call at home and so where is it's all his traveling? If you go dancing more than like 48 miles or something. So no, I'm asking about our orf, our custom here. If someone goes to land dancing, can we call this suffering? He's traveling. <laughs> Chicago, yeah. Yeah, Chicago is traveling. Kalamazoo is <laughs> so and so. So believe me, it goes to all fear, the custom. But generally speaking, let's put it this way. Because what kind of suffering and what kind of illness? Because what, how many diseases we have? Tons of these, right? This is how doctors make money, right? <laughs> so what kind of illness that makes us um, eligible not to fast? Or what illness? That does, does not make us available. It depends on what your doctor says. If your doctor says, no, you have, uh, you know, you are type 2 diabetes, um, and fasting is going to make it worse, then listen to your doctor if he is trustworthy. Okay? Listen to him. If he told you don't fast, then don't fast. Don't argue. And some people say, oh, I don't feel good, I, I feel bad if I don't fast. Allah is merciful. Allah knows you have some excuse. Okay. So the question is that if they work from 9 p.m. at the time all the way to 9 a.m. in the morning, how should they go about it? Hold on. I mean, they, they work? If they work from 9 p.m. all the way to 9 a.m. Okay. So I'm assuming that there, the question is regarding, because the question was like, how should they navigate their Hold on. So like, what do they do in this situation? And if someone works the night shift, okay, um, again, if he or she can fast, then they should fast. They go home after 9 a.m. and sleep. Get a good, long, good nap. And then wake up and pray dhuhr and then pray asr and, and if, if they can I mean, the other maybe more confusing question is about those who travel. Someone asked, actually this happened. They said, we were in a country where we travel, the sun already sets. Remember, so we start eating date and break our fasting. And the, um, the flight was towards East. So I said, soon after we, the sun, we saw the sun. You understand? So come from night to day. So what should we do then? What should we do then? <laughs> is, this, is this okay that they made the right thing when they brought their fasting or, or they should have waited? Or... You, you are already traveling. 
Yes. Right. Right. So they actually broke the fasting when, when the sun set where they were, and then the airplane traveled, and then they they became like half an hour before remember. You understand? So, but they did the right thing, and they don't have to do anything because the Rasul Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Quran actually said that. Um, and similarly, for those who travel, you know, um, towards the west. So you travel, let's say, one hour from Mabri. And while traveling, and the Adam time, the mortal time, comes, and your watch called the Adam. And the sun's still there because you are traveling east, sorry, east. So at that time, you have to wait for the sunset. You cannot eat based on your watch or based on anything else. So for those who have the uh, night shift, they have to observe fasting from Fajr and break it in Monday. There's no other way to do it. Now, uh, feeding in lieu of fasting or Sattah al Fitr, does it have to be only for uh, people of work or you can give it to anybody? People of work? Feeding to the poor, so uh -huh. the poor person can be of any faith? Yes. In fact, only Imam Abu Hanifa, only Imam Abu Hanifa, which actually makes a very good point. Imam Abu Hanifa said, Zakat al Mal cannot be given to non Muslims. But Zakat al Fitr could be given to your neighbors if they are not Muslims and they are in need. You have a Christian or a Jewish neighbor and they are in need, give them Zakat al Fitr. Because he said, those who live in the Muslim society should also be happy with their friend. See how, how beautiful Islam is. And Abu Hanifa was thinking about this in the time when, when we have a huge Muslim empire and with some Christian and Jewish minorities. And he said even religious minorities in the day of our Eid, they should be happy. And we should give them our zakat so in order for them also to feel happy with their friend. How about Sadaqah? Sadaqah is open. You can give some about to non-Muslims, of course. If you have a need, if you see someone homeless person, you don't ask him what's your religion, or you have to become Muslim first before I feed you. No. Well, no. Zakat al man should only be given to Muslims. Should be taken from the wealthy Muslims, because non-Muslims should not pay zakat, right? Zakat should be taken from the wealthy Muslims and given to the poor Muslims. But well, we can give, of course, sadaqah, charity to non-Muslims. I'm not saying we should not, you know. We should, but zakah is special. No. We have a lot of poor uh, non-Muslims in Detroit. You're not talking about non-Muslims? No, Muslims. We have a lot of poor Muslims. You know, here in our area, alhamdulillah, it's a high income. But if you drive south, the hand traffic, Dearborn, Dearborn Heights, Detroit, you'll find plenty of Muslims, so desperate need, anyhow. No. So there's a live stream going on on the website, and someone from the community uh, sent me a message. So the question is, uh, is it okay for the ladies to watch the new streaming of the Ravi and quit Ravi at No, no, no. <laughs> live streaming? Haram? You see it? No, live. Taraweeh or in or on IGD. And you stay home. If, imagine if everybody did this. We have no one walking in our IED, right? And then we cannot do fundraising and, and build our message. <laughs> no, you cannot pray from home. That's, you know, seriously, in Tunisia, that was in the, uh, in the time of the uh, French occupation. They actually wanted the Grand Mufti there to issue a fatwa, you can pray Jumar at home, because they broadcast Jumar. So we have the khatib making khutbah, and the wife making a qama, and the imam giving salah, and you listen to the khutbah from your living room. And, and the reason why, because they don't want the Muslims to come together and pray to them, because it's been to come together. They want to cancel Juma. So you cannot pray behind an imam who's far away from you, simply because you can see it and hear. That's a different story. You can't do that. You can only when you are the message is full and is overflow, 
yet you can go to visit something attached to this. I remember in Egypt when we were young, in Masjid Amr al Masjid, the first and longest Masjid in Africa. Um, people prayed all streets around the mosque. Because the Masjid is huge, but it's full, and all streets are full of people. But there are an extension to the Jamaat, but not staying home. No. Yes. Uh, if someone has a, like some kind of a longer than daylight, like longer than daylight. Well, again, the people have to fast when the fast comes and break the fast when the weather comes. I have many brothers, a uh, Pakistani brother who lives in uh, Stockholm, Sweden. And I met him in Muslim Norway, just getting to each other, and they were come from Umrah. And he, I asked him about this 20 hours. I said, What did you say? We fast? I said, it's difficult, yeah, but it's difficult, but alhamdulillah, we pray, we pray, we pray, we pray in Maghrib and eat something, and pray Isha, and pray Tarawih, and quickly eat Sahur. All these things happen together. Yes, it's difficult, but Islam is, is so dear, Ramadan is so blessed today, and uh, I know some other scholars have different opinions, but since we don't need it, so alhamdulillah, here in Michigan, we, we are okay. Is there a significance of uh, having a iftar at masjid? You know, I mean, any day of Ramadan. Some people say, like, if you break the iftar at masjid, uh -huh. it's more recommended than at home. I don't know any hadith that says that. But praying Maghrib in the masjid is different, different, different. But, but, but that's uh, also difficult. I think the etikaf committee will not like this. <laughs> <laughs> That was not question. So, when praying at, uh, praying at home and coming to the Muslims, so sometimes we pray at home with Jamaat. Yeah, if, if, if you pray at home, it's difficult for you to come and go and come back for a chat, and then uh, you'd be praying Jamaat. Okay, if you live closer to the Muslims, half a mile or a mile or two, then, then it's a different story. But those who live further in not make it. Then come to the Muslims, sit down south. Can we play soccer in Ramadan? <laughs> yes, we can. Yes. No, I just want to show your hand. Yes. You can Yes, you can. I mean, what I said, you know, it's, it's wise not to waste so much time. If it's like an hour, an hour and a half, it's okay. But I mean, six, eight hours, game of great. I mean, because keep in mind, every moment in Ramadan is special moment. You know, the time we spend reading the Quran, making a victor, praying Sunnah or Nafi, praying on time, uh, reading books of Tafsir, that is much more valuable. The time is so valuable, you don't want, you don't want to waste time. 